Hey everybody, Dr. David Jockers here. Today I'm talking about five ways to increase your morning energy without caffeine. Morning fatigue is a serious issue. A lot of people are waking up, really takes them a long time to get up, to get out of bed, and to get moving and get going throughout their day. And so I'm gonna show you exactly what you wanna do to really increase your energy so you can have the mental clarity and the vitality to do everything that you desire to do and accomplish your goals and your dreams. And I'm gonna show you how to do it without caffeine. Now, I'm not necessarily against caffeine. Many people really thrive on caffeine. In fact, uh, coffee consumption is actually linked with lower rates of Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, diabetes, and that's because coffee actually contains powerful polyphenol compounds like caffeic acid and chlorogenic acid that help improve blood sugar sensitivity, insulin sensitivity, so they help stabilize your blood sugar, help improve insulin sensitivity, and that is really critical for keeping oxidative stress and inflammation under control. So if you enjoy coffee, you feel good drinking it, then I'm not necessarily saying you need to come off of coffee. However, I think it's really imperative that all of us understand how we can improve our energy without using caffeine, just in case we're in a situation where we don't have it. And there's a lot of people out there that don't feel good when they consume coffee. They drink a cup of coffee, they take in some sort of caffeine, they feel really jittery, they feel irritable, they crash a few hours later, and that's often because they have poor caffeine metabolism. There's a liver enzyme called the CYPA12 enzyme, and for some people they have some mutations there that cause it to be very sluggish, very slow, and they don't metabolize caffeine very uh, quick enough. And so when they, the caffeine gets up in their, their system, they get overloaded with stress hormones that can cause agitation, mood instability, irritability, and it can over, basically overwhelm their nervous system. And so for those people, it's even more important that they understand how to improve energy without caffeine. You see, caffeine is something called an adenosine receptor antagonist. What that means is adenosine is this neuro compound that basically acts like the brakes on the nervous system. It slows down nervous system activity. Caffeine comes in and it binds to the adenosine receptors in the neurons and no longer allows adenosine to interact with those receptors and, and therefore we don't get a slowdown of the nervous system. With that, it actually activates more of our dopamine pathways. And dopamine has to do with goal setting, it has to do with um, really good focus, attention, and um, just more of an excitatory activity so we can really accomplish what we want to accomplish. And that's why for many people, when they, when they take in coffee, it helps improve their energy. It helps improve their memory, their ability to focus, their ability to uh, concentrate and their ability to get the things they needed to done. And so that's where coffee can be effective or caffeine in general can be effective. But going back to what I was talking about, I, I think it's really important all of us understand how to improve our energy and our mental clarity in the morning so we can get a great start to our day without caffeine. And the better you get at this, the better you're gonna have you know, just more sustained energy throughout the day. And that's because all five of these strategies that I'm about to go through really improve your cellular energy production. See, when we talk about energy, we've gotta go down to the cellular layer, right? So we have, we're, we're, our, our bodies are constructed of roughly somewhere between 10 and 50 trillion cells, depending on you know, what scientists you ask. And all of those cells are producing energy. And that energy is coming from the mitochondria which are the little organelles that are producing energy. And they're also sensory uh, organelles, right? So they're, they're organelles, organisms basically within each cell. And they actually sense what's going on. And so when they feel like the cell is in danger, maybe there's a high infectious load. We have a lot of, we're carrying a lot of a high viral load or a high parasite load or a high bacterial load. There's a lot of endotoxins in our system or a lot of environmental toxins or if we're under a tremendous amount of stress, perhaps we've uh, just, you know, maybe we've just uh, experienced a trauma, then all of the mitochondria start to become hypometabolic. They actually slow down their energy production and in a sense, almost putting us in a state of hibernation. And that oftentimes is actually at the root of uh, chronic fatigue, of lower energy levels, and chronic tiredness. And so really key that we activate those mitochondria. 
And so clearly getting to the root cause, whether it's you know, a high infectious load, high toxic load, or dealing with like PTSD or some sort of emotional stressor or trauma, that's obviously really important to get to the root cause. However, that root cause can be unique and different for each individual. And so the purpose of this video is not necessarily get to the root cause, but to show you different things you can do to help calm and reactivate the mitochondria, to give them the ability to produce cellular energy so you can really have the energy you need to thrive in life. So the first thing is in the morning, get moving. When our ancestors woke up, they typically didn't sit down. You know, they certainly didn't sit down at their computer or look at their phone, right? They didn't have that. So usually they got up and they got moving. And this is kind of natural and innate. You want to get up. You've been sleeping for hopefully seven, eight hours, maybe more. You want to get up. You want to get your body moving early in the day. So movement is actually going to improve oxygenation deep into the tissues of your body, helping improve mitochondrial respiration and cellular energy production. Moving is going to activate dopamine, norepinephrine, cortisol, all these natural hormones, natural neuropeptides that increase energy production. So get moving early in the day. It could just be taking a walk. Going out and taking a walk can be one of the most powerful things you do to improve your energy and keep it sustained so you have all day energy throughout the day. Number two is sun exposure. And this can oftentimes go with get moving, right? You go outside, you're gonna get some sun exposure if the sun is up, right? You might be getting up earlier than that. However, you know, if the sun's up, you're gonna get some level of sun exposure, even if it's sunrise. And actually at sunrise, that can actually be the most important time to get sun because sunrise, we have the highest amounts of infrared as well as red light, which are unique, uh, unique um, forms of light that actually help reduce inflammation. They help activate the mitochondria in a very unique way that helps stimulate mitochondrial biogenesis or the formation of new mitochondria. And so getting regular sun exposure, I like to get it early in the day and I also like to get it really throughout the day because during the middle of the day, if you get, if you get sun exposure in the middle of the day, you're getting more of the UV light, which helps stimulate vitamin D production, which these uh, photons, biophotons that come from the UV light, really activate the mitochondria, help improve energy production. So you're getting unique forms of light throughout the, throughout the day. You're gonna get more of the infrared and the red light at sunrise and sunset, and more of the UV rays, right? The ones that could potentially burn you if you get too much, but, can also, but they're also the ones that produce vitamin D, the, the critical pro-hormone uh, that is critical for immune function, cardiovascular health, for bone health, for brain health, right? We know vitamin D is just absolutely essential for just about all systems of our body. So we get that from the UV rays that are higher towards the middle of the day. So sun exposure in general, just amazing for our body. It's constantly activating those mitochondria. You know, obviously we want to get a healthy, a healthy dose of it, but really just getting that throughout the day and as, on as much of our body as possible. Like in the summertime, it's really good to be able to take your shirt off or, or you know, more or less expose as much of your, your body, your skin to that sun as possible. I mean, even in the wintertime, you know, just getting some cold exposure actually is really good for you as well. I'm going to go into that in just a second but trying to get as much of your body exposed to those biophotons coming from the sun will really activate the mitochondria and energize your body. Now, in replace of the sun, let's say it's overcast, it's raining, or it's just so cold, you're like, I'm really not gonna be able to get much good quality sun exposure. You can get a red light therapy device, right? A red light device. This is something I personally use just about every day, particularly in the colder months of the year. I just feel significantly better when I do this. And you can get a red light device that has both infrared as well as the red light. Infrared penetrates deeper into the tissues of our body. It's great for detoxification. It's great for reducing inflammation. It helps stimulate and activate the vibration of the fat cells, which will help dump toxins out because that's where we hold our toxins in the fat cells. They'll dump out into the circulation. So if you're hydrating well, you know, urinating, uh, moving your bowels, you should be able to get those toxins out of your system. And on top of that, it's gonna help you burn fat more effectively, reduce inflammation, and just, again, turn on the mitochondrial activation, the cellular energy production in all of those cells. Sun exposure, red light therapy, 
tell the mitochondria, I'm in a safe environment, let's turn on energy production so we can really thrive, so we can produce the energy we need to have great mental clarity, so we can have all day energy and, uh, you know, and really, really thrive in life. So make sure we're doing that. Number three is grounding, and a lot of these things you can do together. Grounding means being exposed to the natural electromagnetic frequencies of the earth. So everything in our, you know, everything in, in the world is vibration. Everything's vibrating. So if you remember back to, you know, basic biology, basic chemistry class, we've got electrons, we've got protons, right? We've got these different atoms and they're vibrating, they're, they're moving around. And so when we are exposed to this natural vibration that comes from the earth, we call it the electromagnetic frequency, that's very calming and healing for our body. All of our ancestors were exposed to it. I mean, it's not that long ago that we developed shoes, for example. We were always exposed to it. Most of our ancestors spent a lot more time out in nature than we do today. And they were, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, laying on the ground or, you know, up against trees and, you know, different parts of nature that exposed them directly. They had direct connection to this electromagnetic frequency. And so our bodies have naturally adapted to it. So when we're exposed, when we're in nature, when we're on the, even on your front lawn and you've got your bare feet on grass, dirt, sand, even concrete actually has a healthy electromagnetic frequency. The, the, the earth itself can actually penetrate through the concrete. Um, we're being exposed to that. What blocks that electromagnetic frequency is actually rubber soles. And what do we have in our shoes? Rubber soles. And so if we're not, if we don't have those rubber soles, if we've got, for example, bare feet, if we're maybe in our socks, um, even leather shoes, we're going to be exposed to that electromagnetic frequency. And that's really healthy. We're also exposed to non-native, harmful electromagnetic frequencies from our cell phones, from our computers, our different devices all over our house, there are harmful electromagnetic frequencies. These are new electromagnetic frequencies that have recently been introduced to mankind that our, our bodies have not had the time to adapt to and therefore they're a stressor on our system. And so we're constantly kind of developing this level of electromagnetic uh, dirt and dander on our body because we're being exposed to these. Going out and grounding your body, getting your bare feet, on grass, dirt, sand, right? Like if you're at the beach, that's almost, almost like showering your body from this dirt and dander, from this electromagnetic filth that is on our bodies and clearing that off and allowing our natural electromagnetic signals to be calmer, to be more relaxed, to balance and get back into homeostasis from the electromagnetic stressors that we're constantly being exposed to. So grounding our body, doing that, I recommend, you know, it can be as simple as five minutes a day, right? Just getting your bare feet, grass, dirt, sand, something along those lines. I try to do more, right? I'll do maybe five minutes in the morning, but, you know, throughout the day, I try to get out uh, barefoot on my grass, you know, in my front yard or on the concrete, uh, maybe playing with my kids, things like that, and try to get 30 minutes or an hour uh, or more, you know, depending on, you know, your availability. The more, the better. Right? And that's, again, a calming electromagnetic frequency, going to be really good for the mitochondria, really good for relaxing and balancing your nervous system. Remember, unresolved trauma, stressful circumstances, as well as high uh, toxic load or high pathogen load, these are the things that turn off mitochondrial energy production. So by calming the nervous system, that reactivates the mitochondria, gets the energy going. Number four is cold exposure. Now, cold exposure is a stressor on the body, but we call it a hormetic stressor if, it's only, if, if you're only exposed for a very short amount of time. Obviously, if you're out in the cold for a long period of time, your body's not gonna be able to adapt, right? Especially if your resilience level is low, and that's when your immune system gets compromised, right? You can get sick. So cold exposure though, for very short periods of time, like for example, at the end of your shower, turn it to cold for the last 30 to 60 seconds. And yes, it's a shock on the system. It's not comfortable, it's somewhat painful um, and you know, non-desirable, but what you'll notice is that you have improved energy at the end. You will notice that your energy coming out of that shower is through the roof. And so again, it's painful at first, but your energy will go up 
afterwards. Why is that? Because your body immediately says, wow, this is cold, increases circulation, increases nitric oxide production, which dilates all the blood vessels, increases oxygen extraction from the cells, and on top of that, you get a release of dopamine, norepinephrine, these excitatory neurotransmitters that really activate uh, your brain, improve your, your energy, your memory, your ability to concentrate and focus. So cold exposure, you could do something like a cold plunge. You may have seen other people on social media talking about getting in an ice bucket, right? Or an ice bucket challenge. You could even take a bucket and just dump it over your head if you wanted to, or even just expose like a limb, like for example, putting your feet in cold water. All of those things can be beneficial for you. And especially when you first get started, it's almost like starting with small bouts, kind of like exercise. You don't want to overwhelm your system. You start small and you gradually increase that hormetic stressor as your body adapts, right? And then you're, being, you're able to handle a higher dosage and get more benefits from that. So cold exposure, something I try to do every day. Again, it could be as simple as, you know, if you're grounding your body, you might go out, like for example, this morning in my, at my, in my house, um, right outside my house, uh, there was frost on the ground, right? The last, literally the last week, there's been frost on the ground. So I go out um, in my shorts, right? And I've got a, a shirt on, but I go out, I step and walk in the frost in my front yard, barefoot, right? So my feet are getting exposed to that. I'm feeling cold. And at the same time, I'm getting grounded, right? So I'm getting all of those benefits um, from doing that activity. And then number five is good hydration, right? We really need to hydrate our body. Overnight, we're breathing out water vapor. And so we're, all of us are dehydrated when we first wake up in the morning. When we hydrate our body, first thing, we're rehydrating our system. And we need that water for all cellular energy production. So I recommend drinking 16 to 24 ounces of water before you even think about eating any food. You wanna really rehydrate your system. And an advanced hack is just taking a little bit of sea salts, putting it on your tongue, and just taking a little bit of salts. You could also put it in the water if you wanted to. That will actually, um, the salt there, the sodium, helps with hydration, getting the water into the cells more effectively. So we need the salt, just a little bit, as well as the water, and you're gonna notice a big increase in your energy if you wanna take that to a next level, you can do something like warm lemon water. Warm lemon water actually activates your liver and helps your body dump bile and helps you move your bowels more effectively early in the day. When we move our bowels, we reduce a big toxic load. And remember how I talked about those mitochondria are very sensitive to the toxic load in your body. If you're not moving your bowels, you are bioaccumulating, you're literally um, you know, your feces is rotting and putrefying and you're, uh, you know, like literally the, the longer it sits in there, the larger amount of endotoxins you have, the larger toxic load, and that's going to shut down mitochondrial energy production. So getting the bowel movement out, getting good bile flow, which pulls the toxins out, moves them through your, 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 through your bowels and obviously out into the toilet, that's gonna be really powerful for improving your energy levels. And everybody knows, getting that good quality morning poop, you feel significantly better right after that. So make sure you're doing that. Hydration is gonna really help. Final bonus tip. This is actually an advanced bonus tip. I, would, I want you to start with these five, but this bonus tip may be the most powerful one. It's breath holding exercises. Believe it or not, you know we, I, and I've taught this for years, that if you wanna have good energy, we used to say, take deep breaths. And there can be benefit in that. Taking deep breaths helps relax our body. It helps pull us out of fight or flight, the sympathetic nervous system, and into parasympathetic nervous system activity, where we're in a state of resting, healing, and regenerating. However, if we really wanna improve our energy levels, we actually wanna improve our oxygen extraction. And we do that by challenging our respiratory system and challenging our body's ability to extract oxygen from the bloodstream. So if we do a breath hold, like if I were to just hold my breath right now for 30 to 60 seconds, my body will say, oh my goodness, I'm not getting enough oxygen. Therefore, I need to produce more nitric oxide. Nitric oxide in the blood will help dilate the blood vessel, meaning it increases the blood vessel, allows the blood, more blood to flow through, and improves the dynamics of the cell 
being able to extract oxygen from the red blood cell. So the delivery mechanism of oxygen coming from your red blood cell and into the cell where it can be used to produce energy gets better, right? You get more efficient with that. Kind of like how exercise makes us stronger. Exercise itself is painful. It's a stressor on the body, but our body gets stronger. The muscle fibers get stronger and more resilient. When you do a breath hold exercise, your body will get better at taking the oxygen, bringing it into the cell where it can use it for energy because it's a stressor. It has to adapt to it. Your body is built for survival. So you get stronger and more resilient and better at extracting oxygen, therefore better at improving your, uh, your, your cellular energy production. On top of that, you're also going to get a release of norepinephrine, dopamine, these sort of excitatory neurotransmitters that help with concentration focus, memory, um, you know, and your, really your, your, your ability to get things done. And so if you want great energy without caffeine, I just gave you six strategies, right? Number one was get moving. Number two, sun exposure or red light therapy, right? Doing that early in the day and really throughout the day. Number three was grounding. Number four was cold exposure. Number five was good hydration. And then that bonus one that's not listed right here is breath hold exercises. Simple as holding your breath for 30 seconds, seeing if you can do that, maybe 45 seconds. Holding your breath as long as you can. And then when your body says, I have to breathe, right? Obviously letting go and breathing. And I recommend doing three breath holds, right? So do one, you know, for the first minute, obviously you got to recover, right? Take a minute or so to recover, um, you know, get that oxygen debt back to balance, back to homeostasis, and then do another breath hold exercise, right? Come back to balance and then do one more breath hold exercise. That should take you about five minutes. And in that five minute span, you'll probably notice by the third one, you can go 10 to 15 seconds longer than you could in the first one because your body is already adapting that quickly, getting better at oxygen extraction and improving your cellular energy dynamics. So guys, this is a powerful tip powerful strategies. Please share this video with anybody that you know that you care about. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, what are you waiting for? Now is the time to do that. Go ahead and do that. Click the bell button. That way you get notified whenever I put up a new video and we'll see you in the next video training.